headed for that jubilee yonder in the sky. Oh, what a day of singing, singing. What a day of shouting, shouting on that happy morning when we all shall gladly ride. What a day of glory, 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 hallelujah, glory when we meet our blessed Dead, rising for that jubilee that is just ahead In the twinkling of an eye, chains within to be All the living saints to ride to that jubilee What a day of singing, singing What a day of shouting, shouting On that happy morning when we all shall gladly rise What a day of glory, glory, glory Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what a day of singing, singing. What a day of shouting, shouting on that happy morning when we all shall gladly rise. What a day of glory, 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 hallelujah, glory. When we meet our blessed Savior, yonder in the sky. What a day of singing, singing. What a day Good morning and welcome to our service here at Post Town First Church of God. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning. We are so thankful today that, again, we serve a risen Savior and we've come to celebrate Christ today. Thankful that you've joined us in worship. We hope that you feel the presence of the Lord coming through. We ask for the God's blessing upon our live stream. We're so thankful for the opportunity that we have to reach many souls for the kingdom of God. And we just, we're just so thankful for what he's doing in our midst. And, and we know that God is in control and we're just looking forward to what he's going to do today. Just want to start the service this morning with some scripture as I was reading. In Psalm 46, verses 1 and 2, some of my very favorite portions of scripture are found in Psalm 46. The psalmist writes, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. And then down in verses 10 and 11, he writes, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Amen. The Lord of hosts is with us. Thank the Lord. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Yep. Selah. So thankful for his many promises. Join with me, please, as we open in prayer. Our precious heavenly Father, we do praise you. We thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness. We thank you that you are God and there is no other. We thank you, Lord, for saving our soul. And we thank you, Lord, to be a child of God today. Lord, there's no greater privilege that we could have than to be your children. And so, Lord, we just come expecting great and mighty things today. We come with our cups turned right side up. We come, Father God, expecting you to move and expecting you to work through us. And, Lord, may we be vessels, Father God, that you could fill and use. And we pray for each and every person today that is joining us via the live stream we ask lord that you would encourage their hearts we pray for healing to the sick we pray for deliverance to the captive and most importantly we pray that souls would be saved today lives would be changed by the power of the gospel lord we just commit everything into your hands and we thank you father god that you never waver you never change lord you're just the same today and so lord we put our whole hope and trust in christ and in christ alone and lord we just surrender all to you we thank you lord May May your will be accomplished today, we pray in Jesus' name. Yes, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. And once again, it is a blessing to be able to be here this morning and to bring some uh, the word of God to you in song and in the preached word and testimony. 
And we just thank you so much for the privilege of allowing us into your life at this particular time, whether you're watching on your phone or whether you're watching on uh, a smart TV or on your tablet or computer or whatever. We just thank the Lord that you've allowed us this little time that we can have to come in and be an encouragement to you. We want to tell you about the blessed hope that we have in Christ Jesus this morning. Amen. And so we're going to sing a little bit this morning. Some of you may know these songs, and if you do, we want you to join right in. Now, we always ask people around here to stand, but uh, since you're maybe in the car, you can't stand there, or maybe if you're at home, uh, maybe you you can stand there. It doesn't matter. But what does matter is that you praise the Lord this morning. Let's sing. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Bring the words in one love play. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory. Bring that honor, give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard His children. our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him, Jesus the crucified. Sound His praises, Jesus who bore our sorrow. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong.
it's worthy of all praise. Let us bow our knee before him, raise our hands to heaven raise. When he comes in clouds of glory, with him we'll ever reign. So let's just lift our happy seated. Before we go to prayer today, we want to, we have a lot on our prayer list. I'm sure there's many more than what we have up here. Uh, but we want to uh, just remind everybody, first of all, before I forget it, I, I get uh, I get forgetful sometimes, but I want to remind everybody to, uh, if they can, drop their tithes and offerings off. We'd appreciate that from uh, 10 to 2 each weekday. Brother George will be here. And then also you can pay on PayPal or, or you can send it to the church. And we want to remind people to do that. The work's got to go on. Uh, and if Brother uh, Caudill was here, he'd have his money out. And he'd say, we can't keep going without paying the lights. we got to get to keep the lights on. So, you know, we, we need to do that. We need to be faithful in that. You know, God has uh, blessed us beyond measure. And if we can't give just a little bit to help the work out, then, you know... It, God's not, I always told people this about tithing. Tithing's really critical for the person. It's more critical for the person than it is the church. 
because you've got to learn to give out of the depths of your heart for obedience sake. If you're obedient to God, God will be obedient. He'll be faithful to you. And I believe that for years. I've practiced it for years. And I, I believe if you'll do the same thing, I know God will help you. Even when you don't think you can make it yourself, God will help you. And I believe that. So we have a couple people. I just got handed this right before church. Uh, Joey Bird, they think he may have or, or thinking he may have the virus. So I want to remember him in prayer. Uh, Stan Benj is in the hospital. He's facing a test coming up. I want to pray about that. Uh, Arnetta Krause is sick, and she needs our prayers. Uh, don't forget about Paul Deaton. Uh, we've kind of brought him up a couple times in prayer. Bill Moon's home now from the hospital, but he still needs our prayers, and we will continue to pray for him. Uh, Rena Dalrymple's surgery was very successful. I want to thank the Lord for that. And then Barb, uh, Barb Cash, Tina's mother, is doing some better. Uh, they got her up on the side of the bed this week, and uh, she got up for a couple minutes. So we're praying that the Lord will continue to heal her, and she'll get to come home and be with her family. Also, don't forget about Brian Krebs. We talked about him last week a little bit, or Wednesday night, so I want to remember the, uh, them in prayer. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it's been a real blessing um, today to be here today. And, you know, we all, have, uh, we all have a lot of storms that we face. And, you know, everybody's got a different storm. And Pastor said it best the other day. He said, you know, you're either, you're either coming, getting ready to go into a storm, you're in a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. But their storm's going to be here until the Lord comes back. And we need to pray for one another, lift one another up in prayer, and pray that God would just move us to understand that there's more people going through storms than what we're going through. And we need to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ so we can come back. And, you know, Brian's here with us today. He snuck in on me, and I asked him to come up here and lead us in a word of prayer. And we're going to ask him to come this way. And let's agree together in the Lord's name today that God would heal our land and heal our people. You know, we are definitely standing on holy ground, as that song says. It is so great to be in church, and I realize a lot can't. But you know what? My God's big enough to meet you where you're at. He's strong enough. He's able. So today, let's agree in prayer. Pray for our pastor. He still needs our prayer, even though we can't be here very often. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for being able to be here this morning. I thank you for our congregation. I thank you for the people of this congregation, the love that we have here. But God, I know we can't be together because of sickness, because of this fallen world. But God, we know that you work through plagues. You work through viruses. You work through all the the bad things of this world, to turn it all for good for those that serve you. So God, we know as long as we keep our nose to the grindstone, keep praying, keep moving forward, keep praying for our family, that you'll work everything out for good. We realize that and we stand on that today. But God, there's a lot that are sick. There's a lot that are needy. I pray specifically that you would protect our church family and our families from this virus. Protect us from this plague to where we would not get it, to where we would be healthy, and that you would get praise and honor through it all. And God, I pray for those that are lost that might be sitting at a computer watching this or behind their phone. I pray that your Holy Spirit would go through those sound waves that they would go through those devices. You're not limited to anything. We realize you can work there. Your Holy Spirit can be everywhere at one time. What an assurance we have that we can be in our homes and be watching the services and know that your Holy Spirit is there. We don't have to come to church. We don't have to gather together, although it's very good. And it's, it's a whole different experience when we're together. But God, we know that your Holy Spirit can minister to where we're at at any time during the day. I pray that this is a wake-up call for people, that we realize how dependent we are and how we neglect being in church and being together, that when this is all over and that you have destroyed this virus, that we would come together and that we would be so excited that the walls would not be big enough to contain your people and that we would praise you more, and that this would make us stronger to grow closer to you, because the closer we come to you, 
the more safe that we are. There's safety being in your hand, being in your arms. So God, we pray that you would just shower down a blessing as we come closer to you. Minister through Brother Kevin this morning. Speak to him. Give him every word that proceeds out of his mouth. Be it just come with power from the Holy Spirit. God, we'll never fail to praise you because you are our only hope. You're our only hope through anything that we face. Yes, this virus is top on our mind, but God, we need to, we need to lean on you every day of our life till you call us home. And there will be that day, there will be that day when we will stand before you. And oh, how I look forward to hearing that voice say, come in, for I know you, you are my child. Thank you, dear God, for what you're going to do in this service. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. We can never repay you, but we ask everything in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. Amen. to sing this song today I, I, uh, I've got a lot of stuff on my heart Jimmy's got a lot of stuff on his heart and you know it seems like the people that try to try to keep serving the Lord and try to do the most the devil tries to attack the most yeah. and um, you know he's he's not going to give up his attacks and, but we have to have a made up mind and you know every every now and then um, I've went through some storms and battled some things but you know I've got a I've got a ready mind I know that the Spirit of God, every now and then, sometimes it seems like it takes a while, but every now and then, God gives me a special touch and lets me know and reminds me that I'm still His child. Amen. And that's what this song says. It just says every now and then we just need to feel a little tug from God. Let, let us know that even though the storms are coming, going to come and go, that He's still in charge. And that's what this song says. It's just called the tug. I want you to pray for us as we try to sing. A little boy stood gazing into the clouds above. I know my kite is still up there. A smile came across his little face. The tug had made it real. That's just the way the spirit works. Thank God for what I feel. Thank God for what I feel inside. I know my God is real. I can feel his tug from heaven. I know my God is real. 
be over one day people but until then until then we got to keep pressing I want you to really be in prayer for our pastor as he comes this way I don't know I have a heavy burden for the lost today and I hope and pray if you're lost today would you consider Christ as he comes to preach the message today bless the Lord there's a great need for revival this morning it should be no surprise if we just look around what's going on in this world. We need a fresh move of God. You'd have to be pretty hard-hearted or pretty hard-headed to not see the need nor want revival. I heard it well said, revival is absolutely essential to restrain the righteous anger of God. It is absolutely essential that we have revival to restore the conscious awareness of God. Revival is absolutely essential to reveal the gracious activity of God. Each one of those is important and critical for this day. I believe that God's still on His throne. I believe that He wants to move. I believe that the Father in Heaven has uh, patiently, He has long-sufferingly waited upon men to repent and turn I'm telling you what, one of these days Christ is coming back. 
and it could be very, very soon. You know, the psalmist pled, and it should be our plea, in Psalm 85, verse 6, Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Will you not revive us again? This I do know, when God rends the heavens and comes down and revives, mountains will melt at his presence. Sinners will shake. The righteous will rejoice and problems will pale. Excuses will evaporate. The Spirit will seal and Christ will be crowned. And to not want that, we would have to be pretty much a hard case for God and have a hardened heart. Yet there are plenty of hard-hearted Christians and hard-hearted churches that just don't seem to care about those who are lost, about the unsaved. We should not expect the world to want revival. And if we don't see revival, we cannot blame the world. It should be our concern. I want you to turn with me to the book of Jonah. Jonah, it's only four chapters, but my, my, what a message. Jonah is the wanted man. Jonah is the man on the run. Well, I guess you could say Jonah was the hard-headed preacher, too. Jonah chapter 1, we begin in verse 1 for our message. Let's begin. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish, from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish notice from the presence of the Lord our message is entitled this morning hard Headed Christians. Hard headed Christians. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for your presence. Dear God, we pray your word would find place in every heart. Prepare the soil that it might bring forth much fruit. We plead the blood of Jesus and Satan. We serve you. Notice you are a defeated foe. If God be for us, who can be against us? Lord, I pray that you would bless your people, encourage hearts. May the power of God prevail. May the Spirit of God have liberty. And may God's people look up and know that their redemption draweth nigh. Father, we thank you for the message. Fill us afresh. Holy Spirit of God, hide us behind the cross. May Christ be lifted up, and may all men be drawn unto Him. We thank you, Father. Encourage each and every one of my brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name we pray, God's people said. Let's get right to it this morning. First of all, we see the word of the Lord came to Jonah. The Bible says here in Jonah, the first chapter, verse 1, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. Let's just stop there. Jonah was called by God. God spoke to Jonah. Just as God speaks today, He will speak to you and I if we will allow Him. 
the Word of God comes to us too, right where we are. I'm glad that God's Word is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. It has life, it has power, and it will meet us right in the situation where we are. God's Word will direct us. God's Word will tell us the way of God. God's Word will tell us how we are to live and what pleases God. I tell you, it bothers me that we don't put more priority today on the Word of God. You see, the Word of God will tell us what we should stand for and what we should stand against. I know this, if we don't stand with God, and if we don't stand with, for what God stands for, we will fall for anything. I believe you could say, Jonah was not called by his mama. Jonah's mama didn't call him to preach. You know, there's some preachers today, they've been called, not by God, but by their mom. Jonah wasn't called by his wife. He wasn't called by his brother or sister or grandma. It wasn't some church member that called Jonah. Jonah was a man called by God. Listen, I believe we need to get back to the callings of God. We don't need to run from God. We don't need to avoid God. We don't need to slip slide in a way. But we need the Word of God. We need to hear the callings of God. We need the power of God. Friend, if there's something we need today, we need more of God in this world than anything else. The Bible says there in verse 1, The word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. Again, we see the word of God will tell us what we should stand for and what we should stand against. And as God told Jonah, He said, Now go to Nineveh and cry against Nineveh, for their wickedness is come up before me. The second thing that we see is not only the word of God came to Jonah, we see here the wickedness of Jonah, or the wickedness of Nineveh, that is. We see the wickedness of Nineveh. God saw how wicked and sinful Nineveh's people were. They smoothed down and smoothed over sin that many were on that slippery slope with God. You know, that's a a bad place to be on a slippery slope with God. Just like where God says back in Deuteronomy 32, verse 35, To me belongeth vengeance and recompense, notice, their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them shall or them make haste. I've heard people say, well, you know, I can do sin and it doesn't seem to bother anybody, and I'm not bothering anybody, I'm just doing it. And listen, it bothers God. Some people think, well, I'm not, I'm not paying for my sinful ways. One of these days, friend, you will reap what you sow. You know, so many get caught up in the story of Jonah getting swallowed up by the, the whale that they miss much of the truth and warning of running from God. When sin doesn't look as bad as it used to, When we've lost the ability to cringe or blush at the sinfulness of our day, when it's easy to close our eyes to sin and wink at it, listen, when sin is no big deal and we take the attitude, everybody does it, we are in trouble with God. It's been well said, sin that used to slink down in the back alley now struts down Main Street. Isn't that true? Sin will take you farther than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. Billy Sunday once said, One reason sin flourishes is that it is treated like a cream puff instead of a rattlesnake. 
The biggest problem with sin, you want me to tell you what the big problem is with sin? It separates us from God. Listen, Isaiah 59, verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid His face from you that He will not hear. Sin separates people from God. And the people at Nineveh were separated from God. And God was counting on a man called Jonah to care enough about those people and to go cry out to them that God would deliver them out of sin, that they would turn and that God would show them mercy. And the Bible says Jonah didn't do what God told him to do. I don't know about you, but <clears throat> there's been times that God's had to speak to me and correct me because I didn't want to do what God wanted me to do. <clears throat> and he tells Jonah here, verse 2, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, cry against it, for their wickedness has come before me. And so the third thing that we see is the way Jonah went. The way Jonah went. Verse 3, But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now let's just get this straight. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. Jonah rose up and he went to Tarshish. God said, cry against Nineveh for their wickedness has come unto me. And Jonah, instead, he would flee from them. Avoiding the matter, running from what God told Jonah to do. I think the point is this. God's presence was with Jonah as long as Jonah did what God told him to do. But the moment Jonah decided to disobey God, he went away from the presence of the Lord. And instead, it says, verse 3, Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. How many know that's a hard-headed preacher. Hard-headed. But you know what? We can go with God or we can go against God. We can choose how we will go, whether we want to go the way God is going or we will go from God. And friend, I'm going to tell you, there's always a price of disobeying God. It'll cost you. I think there's things that we should learn from the true story of Jonah. First of all, there are places that we can go and things we can do God is not pleased with. We need to have integrity with God. God sees everything. Friend, I'm going to tell you, be sure your sin will find you out. And God was not pleased that Jonah decided to go his own way instead of God's way. Listen, I can tell you this. There's not only hard-hearted or hard-headed preachers out there. There's hard-headed Christians too. I believe there's Christians today that if Jesus was here and he spoke to them, they, would, they wouldn't do what Jesus told them to do. And yet we have the Holy Spirit to help us and to guide us in all truth. He's the convictor of God. He's the one to lead us and guide us in the way we should go. And yet, we're hard-headed sometimes. We don't want to obey. I also believe that Jonah was the key to the salvation of Nineveh. The Ninevites couldn't repent unless somebody went and told them what God said. And so Jonah was the key here. Listen, I believe the church is the key to the spiritual climate of our nation. 
Washington is not the spiritual climate of our nation. Our government, we obey them, but I want to tell you, there's one that is above the government of this land, and that is the government of God. And God, what He says, is final. The church is needful today to influence this world. God's people are the ones God will use for revival in this world. Please don't forget that. God's people are the ones that God will use for revival in this world. Revival, my friend, everything else is subside. Revival is a fresh move of God. Revival is where the people of God begin again in obedience to God. You could say revival is a new beginning of obedience to God. And friend, we are ripe for revival. Ripe for revival. So I, I believe Jonah here and, and what happened in Jonah's life can speak to us today where we're at and where God would want us to go and be. Listen, Nineveh was in a desperate situation. There was more than 600,000 people in Nineveh and each and every one of them would perish and be lost unless Jonah did what God told him to do. How many people today are lost and without God and are taking their last breath and never more to return to this earth to have a second chance? Friend, we've got one opportunity to reach the lost. Let's not let God down. Whew. Well, how many know God has a way to get your attention? <laughs> the fourth thing that we see is the wind God sent to get Jonah's attention. You see, along the way of Jonah fleeing from the presence of God, God did something. There in verse 4, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. I tell you, God will use what He needs to use to get your attention. For Peter... God used a young girl in Peter's backslidden condition to show him he had denied the Lord and he needed to get back. For Balaam, God used a donkey. For Elijah, it was a small, still voice. For Jonah, it was getting him to the place where God could speak to him and he would listen to God. Sometimes we need to get to that place, my friend, where we will just simply listen to God and say, Lord, here I am. Send me, Lord. Use me. I'm yours. God uses the wind to get Jonah's attention, the adversity, the great storm, the mighty tempest. Can I tell you, more times than not, God has used adversity in my life to get my attention. Because this I do know. When we face adverse situations. We can either choose to run from God. Or we can run to God. But God can get us to a place. Where we have to listen to him. And that's what he would do with Jonah. God would also use the wisdom of those sailors. To get Jonah's attention. How many know God can speak. Through whomever he wants to speak to. If he needs to get your attention, God could use your dog if he needed to to get your attention. Well, we see the sailors were determined to find out the cause of this great peril now that they all were in. The Bible says there, notice in verse 7, Jonah chapter 1, They said, Everyone to his fellow, come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for what cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation? From whence comest thou? What is thy country, and of what people art thou? 
He said unto them, verse 9, I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord. The God of heaven which hath made the sea and the dry land. Verse 10 says, Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, What or why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Sometimes God will use those he has to to speak the truth to us. To show us where we belong and where we don't belong. Has that ever happened to you? God can even use the world to say, I thought you were a Christian. And bring conviction upon you. You see, Jonah didn't belong on that boat. Jonah belonged in Nineveh doing God's work, preaching to the lost, crying against their wickedness and sinfulness and getting them to turn to God. The fact that Jonah lost interest in the souls of men is shown right here. I tell you, there's preachers out there that have lost the interest in the souls of men. They're just wanting to buy their time or it's a job or collect a paycheck. Can I tell you, my friend, you can't buy souls. You won't buy them out of hell, my friend. You can't redeem them with silver or gold, but they have to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And it takes a man or a woman who's willing to do what God's told them to do. We ought to care about the lost. We got to be careful we don't lose that burden. The fact that Jonah lost interest in the souls of men is there. It says in verse 5, Then the mariners were afraid. They cried every man unto his God and cast forth the waves that were in the ship into the sea to lighten of, of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. If anything, here's a God-called man. He's now on a boat full of unsaved people. He should at least care about their souls. But Jonah had lost the burden of God. That's one of the biggest things that I, I value and I protect. I protect caring for the flock. I protect the spiritual things of God I would rather give up temporal things listen the grass can grow it'll be there tomorrow today is the day the Lord hath made we've got to be about our father's business the lakes will be there the golf course will be there but there are souls that are in the balance of heaven and hell listen we've got to allow God to use us he doesn't have to. You know, he could have, he could have get, given up on Jonah. He could have said, you know what, Jonah, I was counting on you. And, and since you've decided not to do what I've called you to do, I'm going to get... Aren't you glad that God doesn't give up on us? Even, I, I, we got a great picture here. Even though Jonah lost zeal for God and lost the burden for the lost and the concern... Yet, even the shipmaster, the ship captain, had some sense to tell the hard-headed preacher where he needed to be. It says there in verse 6, So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. I don't think the captain was mocking. I mean, some scholars may say, well, the captain seems to be mocking Jonah. I don't believe that. I believe the captain was being used of God to tell Jonah, listen, your God is still in heaven. If you would just get up and call upon God, God will answer prayer. He's a merciful God. He's a loving God. 
I think there's a sense of desperation here in that plea. Sometimes the world can see when we are not right with God better than we can see ourselves. And sometimes the world can see where we should be. We can't see it ourselves. Finally, we see Jonah. He was a one in man. Well, he what the ship didn't want him. The sailors going to Tarshish didn't want him. The fish that swallowed him didn't even want him. But God wanted him. And when you're wanted by God, God will use whatever he must to get our attention. We see where God uses the whale to get Jonah's attention. Look down in verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swell up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. I've heard well-versed scholarly people say, nowhere does it say it was a whale that swallowed Jonah. It was a great fish. But I recall... Jesus himself tells us it was a well. Jesus refers to this in John 20, I'm sorry, Matthew 12, verse 40. Jesus refers to this, Matthew 12, verse 40. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. If anybody knew what kind of fish it was, Jesus knew. As a matter of fact, Jesus said this is symbolic of me as the Christ going to Calvary's cross and being buried in the grave. He was in the grave three days and three nights, but thank God, morning came, the stone was rolled away, and Christ came out of that tomb. Hallelujah! He's alive. You say, preacher, this ain't Easter. He's alive. Every day we, we have a hope because he's risen. The empty tomb declares to us, my friend, that we can know the grace of God. We have a God of a second chance. You see, God knew that you and I would need a Savior. And that's why Christ came to this world. He came to this earth out of heaven to earth, my friend, to live a sinless life and to die upon Calvary for you and I. And it is only through Christ that a man or woman can be saved. Give your life to Christ. He'll save you. He'll keep you, my friend. And he'll give you an inheritance among the redeemed. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We have a great symbol here. of Jonah being in the belly of the whale as Christ was in the belly of the earth. And he came forth. And Jonah is fixing to come forth as soon as he learns his lesson. The key verse in this entire book of Jonah, I believe, is Jonah chapter 2, verse 1. Because that verse says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. I mean, think about that for a moment. God told him to go to Nineveh. Jonah rebelled against God. He was hard-headed. He said, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm not going to go to those ungodly people. I'm not going to preach to them. I'm going to go my own way. I'm going to go to Tarshish. I'm going to lay on the beach in Tarshish. I'm going to take it easy. And God said, you think you're going to? I've got a plan for you. I'm going to tell you this morning, 
God got a hold of Jonah. He allowed him to go into the depth of the belly of the well till Jonah would realize who he was, who he belonged to, and where his help came from. Sometimes God's got to get us to that point where we belong and we cry out to him, Lord, it's to you alone. I need you, Lord. I depend upon you, Lord. I need your strength, Lord. I can't make it without you. Listen, sometimes God has got to deal with some hard-headed Christians. I can preach this because he's had to deal with my hard-headedness at times. Mama told me when I was young, son, you got a hard head. And God has brought me to the point where I have cried and said, God, you've got my attention. For some people, they're coming down to the end of their life. Church wasn't important. Things of this world were more important. And then when they maybe get news, they've only got a few months to live, all of a sudden, what really becomes important matters to them. Don't let it take that to get your attention. I'm glad that finally God got Jonah's attention and he prays. He begins to seek God and call upon God and turn from his selfish ways it says, then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly. You say, man, that must have been a, a dark, stinking place. I'll tell you what, God can hear you in any dark and stinking place you might be. Proverbs 14, 14. Remember that verse. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own way. I have seen that verse fulfilled time and time again. But I'm glad as well, Second Chronicles 7.14 is true. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Let me ask you a question. What do you think is needed today? We say, well, the greatest thing that can happen today is they find a cure for the virus. And everybody's cured and everybody's healthy. Do you think, my friend, that this world will be changed today if things go back to normal? Sure, we don't want people to die. We want people to be healthy. But, friend, the greatest thing is we want people to be saved. We want people to be saved. I think another key verse here is the third chapter of Jonah, verse 1, where it says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Woo-wee. Amen? Isn't God good? And saying, verse 2, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Verse 3, So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. You see, after God heard the cry of Jonah, He made the fish vomit up Jonah. I want to tell you what, God can... I'm trying to say this nicely. God can allow... Things in your life to chew you up and spit you out <laughs> before you will get serious with God. I've been chewed up and spit out before. I want to tell you what, the devil, he's chewed on my life and he has spit me out and thank God I'm no longer his. I don't belong with him. I'm not going his way. I've decided I'm going all the way with Jesus, friend. This world had me and chewed me up and spit me out. And it's done nothing good for me. But God has only been good to me. 
God's given me more, my friend, in the years I've served Him as a Christian than 10,000 lives that this world can give me. Friend, if you've got to be chewed up and spit out, so be it. But when you land, you get your feet on the rock, and that rock is Jesus, friend. And you start going with God. Start going with God. Can you imagine... The Bible says the word Lord came to Jonah again. Second time. He said, Arise, go to Nineveh. He's like, Yes, sir. Here I go. Yes, sir. I ain't going back in that mouth. <laughs> right? Oh, my. God gave Jonah a second chance. God will give you a second chance. When Jonah responds and obeys and he goes, I mean, Nineveh is saved. I don't know if he had more than one sermon, but his sermon was to tell them to repent and turn to God. And he preached it for 40 days. I heard of a preacher, he became a pastor and went to preach and he preached the same sermon first Sunday he was there he preached the sermon the second Sunday he came back and preached the same sermon third Sunday came back and preached the same sermon I guess it was an elder or deacon of the church came up to him and said don't you know any other sermons preacher looked at him and said yeah but when you start obeying that one I'll go the next one listen that is the message and Jonah, he must have rose up every day, rolled up his sleeves, and he got the work for God. Saying, Lord, you've told me to do this. I'm going to do it for you. The sparing of many that are lost today, hear me. The sparing of many that are lost today depends on you and I listening to God. Obeying Christ and going into our Nineveh. The truth is, revival begins with you and me. God calls us, even by the mouth of Hosea, when he says in Hosea 10, 12, Sow yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Let's begin sowing the right kind of seeds. He that sows in tears shall reap in joy. Let's break up the fallow ground. Let God deal with the hardness in the hard areas of our lives. If you're a hard-hearted or hard-headed Christian, let God break through. Seek the Lord and He will come and rain righteousness upon you. There is no better thing that I think that we could experience in the day which we live to see a mighty move of God. And people being awoken to their spiritual need. And when churches are open again, which I believe will be shortly, there will be multitudes, not just crowding the churches, but seeking God, crying out, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Let's prepare. Let's get ready. It's a great old song. I haven't heard it in a long time. But it's a very touching song about inviting the Holy Spirit to come down and reign. He's already here. We just need to allow Him to move. And it goes, Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. How we need your touch again. Holy Spirit, rain down rain down let your power fall let your voice be heard come and change our hearts as we stand on your word holy spirit rain down wherever you're at right now would you just close your eyes in prayer with me and let's turn to god if you're in a dark place if you're discouraged if you're down if you're feeling defeated, if Satan has just almost 
taken every ounce of strength from you. Join me as we call upon God, the God who delivers and the God who answers by fire. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we pray that you would lift every weary soldier, that you would strengthen every discouraged brother or sister. And Father, in the name of Jesus, you said whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So in Jesus' name, we bind Satan and his work. And we claim the power of God to prevail. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And Lord, I pray that multitudes would come to know Christ personally as their Lord and Savior. Lord, we have loved ones that need Christ. All of us do. Family members that need Christ. Lord, we cry out to you. Let revival come. Spirit of the living God, and begin with each of us. Begin right now. We pray. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, we're glad you got to join us today, and I hope and pray that this day will find you um, maybe not in the place that Jonah was, but if you are in the place that Jonah was, then cry out to God. He still can hear your voice, and he'll answer your cry. If you'll call out faith-believing, God will do the rest. We're very thankful for that, praying that Christ will be in us all. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the day that you've given us, Lord. You said in your word, Lord, in that third chapter of Proverbs, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them around your neck. Hide them in the depths of your heart that you might find good understanding in the sight of God and man. Lean not to your own understanding, but all your ways acknowledge me, and I'll direct your paths. God, direct our paths today, dear Heavenly Father. Help us to walk in those paths. Help us not to sway or run. But God, help us to keep walking in your paths. It will bring health to our navel, moral to our bones. We thank you, Lord, that you'll do that today, Lord. We know that you can. We'll give you praise, honor, and glory, Lord, until we meet again in this life. Hold us in the palm of your hand, Lord, we pray. Hide us in the cleft of the rock until that time comes. And we'll thank you, Lord, for it. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.